Hi, I just want to uh, remind you that this upcoming weekend, uh, the 26th and 27th, our collection this week will go um, to Catholic Charities. Uh, we, we have a second collection to go to Catholic Charities for the fires and storms out west. Uh, I know you're at home, many of you. Um, so if you would like to donate, um, you can make checks out to St. Agnes Church and we will make sure that they get to help uh, the situation of the, um, both the storms and the fires. Um, and the second thing I wanted to mention is that this upcoming weekend, our parish council and um, staff this weekend, the 26th and 25th and 26th, Friday and Saturday, we are doing a retreat for our staff and parish council. Father Matt Rao will be our retreat guide. And we are going to video parts of the retreat so that we can put online so you can watch. Uh, the theme of the retreat is being ministered to and all that's happening in our church and country and world so that we can minister to all of you during this uh, time, especially with the pandemic more effectively. And we will be at Priestfield tonight, the 25th, and tomorrow, the 26th. So if the parish would keep us in prayer. Good morning. This is the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our opening hymn is As We Gather at Your Table. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, O oh God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to make love's victory known. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. And brothers and sisters, to enter into this celebration, let's call to mind our sins and be transformed by the new life of the risen Lord. Lord, you are light in life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you are the Word made flesh. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you call us to work in your vineyard. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, 
receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen, Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasure of heaven, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You object, O house of Israel. You say the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel. Is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous person turns away from their righteousness and commits iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked person turns away from the wickedness they have committed and does what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because that person considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they, surely, they shall surely live. They shall not die. The word of the Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are my God, my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides.
guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is an encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, then make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do not, from selfish ambition or conceit, be in humility, regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, you. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went father went to the second and said the same and he answered I'm going sir but he did not go which of the two did the will of his father they said the first Jesus said to them truly I tell you that the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going to enter the kingdom of God ahead of you 
For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did believe him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel, today's parable, Jesus wants to shock us. Did we hear his words? He says, truly I tell you, tax collectors and prostitutes are going to enter the kingdom of God ahead of you. And you and I, if we are tuning in to this Mass, I would suggest we probably consider ourselves religious people. And the scholar Father Raymond Brown once said about this gospel, if you look at it, the greatest sinners tended to not have a problem with Jesus' message. It was those, maybe like myself or yourself, that we, maybe we consider ourselves religious. As we can say the prayers... Know some of the teaching of the church. Think we have the answers. And we have to be careful that we're not unopen to the change that the good news, the gospel, is calling us to. Think about it. The prostitutes and tax collectors were the one that were seen far from God. And yet Jesus said... That they're going to get into the kingdom of God ahead of the chief priests and elders who were expected to be close to God. Oftentimes what Jesus is getting at is if we think we already have the answer, we cannot change our thinking. And the religious tendency is to can become frozen on what we think and not have the ability to move and change like God's mercy does with the prostitutes and tax collectors. Einstein once said, everything has changed but our thinking. The reality is the river of life is a movement. It's always flowing. But the mind tends to lack behind it. It holds on to past moments. It cannot ride the new, the good news that is happening for us and enter that kingdom message that offers such joy, liberation, and freedom. A story from the Sufis goes like this. There was a case against Moladon's rooting, and the court and the judge asked him, How old are you, Nazrudin? He said, you know, and everybody knows, of course I'm 40 years old. This surprised the judge because five years ago, he said, you were also in this court, and I asked you how old you were, and you said you were 40. How is this possible? After five years, you're still 40. Nasruzin said, I am a consistent man, sir. Once I say I'm 40, I remain 40 forever. You can rely on me. (laughs) The point of the story, loyalty to the mind is foolish. Holding tightly to my same position as I did earlier comes at a price, and I can deny, deny the facts, the reality, the participation in the great river of life. The old adage runs true, the mind makes a good servant, but a poor master. You see, parables like Jesus tells are like jokes. They get to the punchline to shock us, maybe even make us laugh, to see reality different. You see, we have to be willing to move into change, to move into new life, and we'll starve. And we may not die, but emotionally, physically, spiritually, we can be dead if we don't move in to the new life Jesus holds us. We don't have to hold on to our former reality. Jesus gives us permission to let go. We can take Jesus' call to move forward in the flow of life, to change, to enter into that newness of life. The tax collectors and prostitutes did. 
We have permission by that new life, like those fish, to go to the other side of the shore to be fed. The purpose of this parable is to call us to change. Jesus addressed it to the chief priests and elders. He wants it to serve as a mirror for their consciousness, consciences. So you have it. You have two servants. The first says he won't do it. He doesn't want to change, or she doesn't want to change, and then does. And the second says, I'll do it, but doesn't. One is uncomfortable with change, which are sinners and prostitutes, but they accept it. They move into that new life. And tax collectors, the elders, elders and priests are unwilling to change. The problem with not growing and is changing is that we make ourselves God rather than disciples and followers into what's new. It's dangerous to have all the answers and not be open to what's new is being presented to us. Philippians today shows us through the hymn that this hymn is how to change, how to move towards change. What did Jesus do? He put aside his godliness. In a sense, he didn't take his godliness so seriously that he could not put it aside and enter fully into our human condition. Both our joys and our foibles. I mean, Jesus could look with prostitutes and tax collectors in not a superior way. But for the first time, he could raise their human dignity because he looked at them with equality and unconditional love. So much so that he would enter into the powerlessness of our human condition. All of our vulnerability. And what would happen? He would go to the point of the cross to be murdered by those who were determined to hold power over. Where Jesus came with the power of the Spirit to carry, so that we could be empowered to carry out a life of love. And so this humility of God is like a centrifugal force. It's a force of love, like we hear in that hymn, that moves outward, out of self, to empower and bring new life to those in all situations around us. You know, I can think of the church, I can think of the world, I can think of any profession, and the most dangerous people I have ever met take themselves too seriously. Recently, I heard a story. We we all respect and love nurses and doctors and what they're doing uh, during this pandemic. However, not all are good, like any other profession. Recently, I heard a story about two doctors that were really impressed with themselves, with their abilities. So one of the doctors nicknamed himself God, and another nicknamed himself Jesus. Well, one day, another doctor, like a parable, thought the best thing was to do was to burst their bevel. So he said to the doctor, Jesus, if you show me how to walk on water, I'll show you how to change that catheter. Humility is the message today. It is accepting our powerlessness, that we're not God, that a life of grace comes with gifts, but also human limitations. Or as my friend and mentor, Father Larry Kahn, deceased, would say, we need to take everything serious but ourselves. We need to take the people and situations and what our professions or callings call us to, take that seriously but don't take ourselves too seriously. This brings me back to the gospel. You see, the chief priests and elders, Jesus has just healed a man with a withered hand. They could have said, nice hand, but they were upset he did this on the Sabbath. I think we have to remember there were good chief priests and elders in Jesus' day. But these particular ones wanted to make sure they had the power and control And they are trying to trap Jesus, who is operating out of the best of his Jewish tradition, to bring forth life. The whole context of this gospel is, they ask him where his authority comes from. 
If he says he does it on his own authority, he will be viewed as a maverick without having legitimate formal authority by the faith tradition like the elders have. If he says he does it on God's authority, they trap him there too because the chief priest and elders are the legitimate interpreters of what comes authentically from God. Jesus doesn't fall into the trap, but gives them one because they want to uphold their power and violently crush what they see as a threat to their power, which is Jesus. This is very relevant today in our church and country. We have to realize just because someone has formal authority does not necessarily mean that they're operating out of the authority that comes from God. A good example, chief priests and elders, is Michael Bransfield, who misused his formal authority to abuse, steal, and destroy. Not all bishops or priests are bad, but he misused his formal authority for his own selfish and violent agenda with no regard for others. Another situation from this week with Breonna Taylor tragically killed by a cop. Fired many shots at an innocent vulnerable. This cop misused his authority. Law enforcement is used to protect the common good, and there are many good cops who use their formal authority well. But this situation, I don't know about you, but I don't think the cops did. I think it was unjust and evil. What do these two examples hold in common? With Michael Fransfield and the injustice there, the people of God do not feel that we have been given the justice that is necessary for healings, and especially the victims feel that way. Then Breonna Taylor, the situation in court, the decision where the cops get off in a very minor way with few charges, we don't feel like we've been given justice. And the black community and the victims of violence, rightly so, don't feel they have been given justice. The gospel calls us to change. To change the way we think, but also to change the structures as well. What in the church has to change to hold our formal authority and bishops and priests accountable, which I believe we have to change the structure that sometimes puts the priest above the laity. I'm a member of the Association of U.S. Catholic Priests, and one of the things that we've pushed for for reform to our bishops, who uh, have not done this yet, but we said that a seminarian should not put a collar on until he's a deacon. In a sense that he had to find his internal call before he wears some formal authority. We need reforms of our seminary. We need women at each level of decision making. Laity. This will bring about change. We've got to catch these things earlier on than we have. Well, what about what is happening with Brianna Taylor or George Floyd? What needs to happen with law enforcement, so that this does not happen. You know, I'm not an expert in this field, but a prosecutor once told me, he said, we need to start like the seminary at the academy. And do we pick up on behaviors that this might not be a good cop? Is there a racism there? I have a good friend who is a priest in Atlanta who tells me how many of his parishioners who are black because of the car they drive that is nice, get pulled over for no reason. How do we change this behavior? We need good cops and priests. We need good leaders. You know, the definition of insanity, someone once said, is to do the same thing and expect different results. This is what Ezekiel says today. We're responsible, all of us, to do our part to make the necessary changes to fight whether in the pews for justice or 
in our church or on the streets or in the courts for equality. We all have a part to play and we have to take responsibility. Otherwise, we're insane because we're doing the same thing and expecting different results. And we renew our baptismal vows, which transforms us to help us to build a world of love, peace, equality, and justice. And so I ask, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Almighty Father, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and forgiven all our sins. May he keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. We are God's children through baptism. Therefore, we ask confidently for our needs and those of others. Our response, loving God, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayer. For the church, for humble hearts committed to the Father's will, we pray, loving, loving God, God, hear, God, hear, our, hear our, prayer. our prayer. For our nation's leaders and for citizens of every political persuasion, may we show compassion for others, especially the needy, and marginalized, we pray, loving, loving God, God, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our Jewish brothers and sisters who this week observe Yom Kippur, a time of repentance and atonement, for all who repent and atone, we pray, loving, loving God, God, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick and those near death, for deliverance from pain and suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. We loving pray, God. loving God, hear our prayer. For the dying and those who have died, especially Rose Marie Byers and John Binsfield, for caregivers and those who grieve, we pray, loving God, hear our prayer. The parish community would like to support you in prayer. Please share with us your needs and intentions. I'd like to pray for our parish council and the members of our staff who will meet uh, for retreat and to set vision so that we can minister to the St. Agnes community um, during the challenging times we face. We pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. I like to pray for the people of Beirut, um, for those affected by the fires and storms, for healing. May uh, the resources that we give uh, truly make a good impact, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. I like to pray for an end of racism in all its forms, for healing, for justice, for 
uh, that, that Breonna, Ta- Breonna Taylor and others' lives are not in vain, that we may change uh, structures and laws so that uh, these, these situations won't happen again. We pray. Loving, Loving God, God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Faithful God, daily you draw us into your mystery. Grant what your spirit prompts us to ask in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Our hymn is Jesus the Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and for all of God's holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word, you created the word, the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator. And he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Oh, 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And you are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from me, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, almighty father, Give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the time by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, the Apostles and Martyrs, Saint Agnes, and with all the saints we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And at the Savior's command and formed by the word of God, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace is my gift to you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. el pecado del mundo danos la paz danos la paz And these are the gifts of God given for us, the people of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our hymn is, O Beauty Ever Ancient. from seeking you in creatures, fleeing grief and pain within. O beauty ever ancient, O beauty ever new, you the mirror of my life renewed, let me find my life in Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in the glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, and transformed by his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn is, Let All Things Now Living. now living a song of thanksgiving to God our creator
triumphantly raise, who fashioned and made us, protected and stayed us by guiding us on to the end of our days. God's banners are o'er us, pure light goes before us, a pillar of fire shining forth in the night. Till shadows have vanished and darkness is banished, as forward we travel from light into light.